In this video, I want to give my first impressions or kind of review or initial review of Wastelanders, however you want to call it. I haven't done all of the content, but I did beat the main story. I played through a decent chunk of what's available, and I feel like I know enough now at least to have a pretty good understanding of it and be able to give you my initial review slash first impressions. I will have a full review coming later when I have explored the game systems a lot more, actually given it subsequent playthroughs because that's important. But as far as my initial impressions are just is fall at 76 good now i've been getting this question a ton so i will go fully in depth in this video if you guys do want to subscribe or support the channel there's a lot more coming even after wastelanders bethesda has definitely shared that tomorrow we might have some new details and some things or if you just want to check out my twitter and follow me there i'll have that link down below also so just to get into it though, is Fallout 76 Wastelanders good? After completing the main story, playing some of the side content, well, yeah. It's not great, it's definitely not a perfect update or DLC update to the game, but if you were somebody who already owns this, I think you'd be silly to not give it a try. And although I think it's great and just overall a ton of fun, I have a feeling Wastelanders will end up being similar to the Outer Worlds, where it's not going to get better with time. Fallout 76 overall may, but I think the hype is really high right now and that is definitely affecting some of the reactions or receptions. And I'll explain why a little bit later in this video. But at least right now, one of the big signs to me that this was actually good was how much I wanted to play it. I played Wastelanders almost entirely by myself. I streamed it for roughly four or so hours yesterday morning and then I filmed for about five six hours working on my day one tips which I will have linked in the eye if you want to check it out. So after doing all of that work which is pretty tiring I still wanted to play more. I'd already spent a good chunk of my day playing or immersing myself in this new DLC and it wasn't enough and I ended up playing till around 1 a.m which isn't super late but considering I started at around 7.30 a.m., that is a pretty long time. Before Wastelanders came out, I said, to really deliver, to really sell people on this game, it has to hit a few fronts. The story and overall content additions have to be good. It has to improve the end game of Fallout 76, keeping around some of those veteran players. The bugginess must either be addressed or kept at a minimum, fixing some of the lingering issues, but not introducing a plethora of new ones. And then finally, there was the big monetization consideration. How would Bethesda kind of monetize this? Would they get as sketchy as Fallout first? Would there be tons of new pay to win items? So in this video, I kind of divided it up into those different segments as those points of evaluation. At this point in time, I'm most well equipped to talk about the main story as I played through all of it. I completed the game with the Raiders, but finished all of the story quest for the Settlers first, so I have a pretty good idea. And in the past, on the PTS, I actually started this game on a new character and doing that plus playing now with my high level character, Something that became immediately obvious to me is Wastelanders will really vary, and I think in a quite significant way, depending on how you play. It seems like Bethesda really took into consideration that a huge chunk of people would be returning to this game that have been playing it for the past year and a half, but then also there's probably going to be a ton of new people giving it a try for the first time. So if you're going in on an existing character, one of the really cool things is the game world will be quite reactive to that. Throughout the entirety of the main story, at certain points, I actually had additional options while doing certain quests. One of the notable ones you hit fairly early on is at a certain robot, you could just say, hey, I'm the general of the Enclave, so let me in. That's one of the big ones, but there are several additional ones all throughout the game, and although at points they could be relatively minor, it still felt good, it felt special. The game was recognizing that I had done something previously and actually rewarding me for that. And it's not like this happens once or twice, there are numerous of these all throughout the quest, so it definitely is something to consider. Even further, many of the random NPC encounters you have will react to you, whether it be to your prestige, your status, having saved or attempted to save Appalachia, or just what kind of equipment or weapons you are holding. That kind of stuff, those little comments these NPCs will make made you feel really immersed in the world, and it was a cool experience to consistently see it happen all throughout the game. Although conversely, I definitely think there are pros and considerations for new characters also. When starting a new character, you're going to have to complete some of the vanilla quests of Fallout 76. And although I wouldn't say that's a high point per se, some of these actually got upgrades. Some of the locations you'll have to travel to actually have totally new content or NPCs at them. And if you're already completed or cleared through those areas, you might just not see it unless you go out of your way just to go re-explore them. 
If you're a veteran character, there's a whole chunk of new content that you will never have to see that was just recently added. And to me, the best way and kind of the reason Bethesda was saying, yeah, you should start a new character is because that is one of the premier ways to actually experience it. Having to actually walk everywhere, but also getting to see a ton of those locations changed or new locations that you otherwise would just fast travel over is pretty cool. It's a nice experience. Although one of the caveats with this, it becomes pretty clear that the vanilla 76 storyline is worse. I had to do one of the quests even on my older character because I never completed it on that particular character. And when you transition from the Wastelanders quest to the vanilla 76 quest, you could just feel the decline in quality. Wastelanders is a better way of telling a story. So really for me, I think one of the best ways to play this is actually twice. Once in a high level character to get all of those references to your past deeds, and then once perhaps a bit more slowly on a new character to see some of the changes to past or vanilla content and see some of the changes to the world. And one of the other things that'll stand out to you, especially if you played the past story, is how much Bethesda expanded some of the lore. In particular with the Raiders, there's a lot of references to the past Raider story from Vanilla 76. Sometimes they'll say something and you might be a little bit confused if you didn't actually know the lore. So in that way, it also can be rewarding to be reminded of that past content. Certain NPCs now do have new dialogue choices, so that does make some of that content a bit more enjoyable, although focusing more specifically on some of the new story. One of the first things that I think was just done exceptionally well was the dialogue. The actual voice acting was fine. It's not like it totally blew me away, but it never took me out of it because the voice acting was so bad. But more so, what was actually being said was really good. You had options to quickly skip through the dialogue if you wanted to, but if you wanted to ask a bunch of questions, get a bunch of lore and backstory about what you were going to do, that choice was there also. They did a good job at having options for both kinds of players. And one thing that really stood out to me playing through all of this, at many points, I was surprised that Bethesda had almost the exact response I was looking for. Whether I was trying to be snarky or just mean to the NPC, I was doing an evil playthrough, something very similar to what I wanted to say was there, and that felt really good. That, of course, wasn't always the case, but the vast majority of the time, the dialogue options really seemed to cover most of the bases, which I did appreciate. Something else that was pretty cool was special checks were all throughout this DLC. You probably heard about this, a ton of people were talking about it, but it made you feel important, like you were also getting rewarded for the character build you went through. And although they were cool, I found myself almost always leaning towards doing some of them. At times, they weren't super impactful. Like a special check was there, but it's not like it really gained you much over some of the non-special check choices. You might get a few additional caps or something like that, but most of the time you would end up doing most of the same things. It could just change the flow of the conversation slightly. It seems like overall, the special checks that actually carry a lot of impact are the ones that are over 12 special. Those are the ones that have a little bit heavier of a consequence or might not make you do as much footwork when completing a certain quest. Although oddly enough, it seems like the special checks are just way more common with the settlers than the raiders. I'm not entirely sure why that is, if the raider story is like older and the settlers is newer or something. And at points, those special checks may result in a larger challenge for low level characters because you just can't pass them. Once you get to the middle or so of the story, it might actually become fairly difficult. Where in my high level character, I basically always had chems available that would allow me to pass a special check even if I didn't initially qualify. Wastelanders does a good job at making you feel like the story is much larger than it is. Like in the first half, it felt like there were tons of new things that would happen, especially thinking about the trailer. It's like, oh yeah, I still have to do that, that, and that. But in reality, the new story, the quests themselves of the main story aren't super long. For me, being a high level character and being able to get through a lot of the combat quickly, I completed all of Wastelanders in a little over 8 hours, probably between 8 and 9 hours or so. And I would say I played in a fairly typical fashion. There were one or two older quests I had to go back and complete. I didn't always rush through the dialogue. Many times I actually took my time and went through all of the different dialogue choices. Although at some points an NPC was annoying me, so I just kind of get through it fairly quickly. And I didn't just try to grind through things as quickly as possible. I took detours, traded at the legendary purveyor, checked out other locations. And I would say roughly it's probably eight hours or so of raw new content. 
And that again is just the main story. The interesting part is it'll really vary depending on how you play. If you're somebody who never played Fallout 76 or didn't complete the main story, even if you're a high level, it'll take you a good few hours to get through some of that old content. At numerous junctions, you'll have to do an old quest before you could do the new one. And it's not like that old quest is gonna take five minutes. It might be a half hour, 45 minutes. If you're somebody who's not gonna really be fast traveling around, but rather walking everywhere and then stumbling upon new locations, that'll drastically increase the time. So although I would say the main story is relatively short, there's a lot of other content around it, including a lot of other new content around this, like some of the allies that don't tie into the main story but are relevant, that will extend that playtime. And I do want to be clear with that, when I say 8 hours, that's like a fairly quick run through. If you're fast traveling most places, a fairly high tier build so you can one shot most enemies, which isn't really that uncommon if you are a higher tier build, and it definitely isn't a representative number as far as the Wastelanders content overall goes. There's easily 15 to 20 hours plus of content here. I've already dumped in 13, 14 hours and I still have a lot more to go. That eight hour number is more so how long you'll spend talking to NPCs, exploring during the main story quests. I don't want people to get hung up on it thinking that's how long Wastelanders overall will be. Although something important to keep in mind, if you're somebody who played Fault 76 actually did design a build, the DLC overall was really easy. The only time I died more than once was in Vault 79, and that was because it was almost a build counter with those tanky robots. But in this, I don't think the combat was ever really a main focus. It wasn't the main appeal. The story was, and I definitely liked that. Although when it comes to the story overall, and I'm not going to share any spoilers here, something that was interesting is I actually think the story is worse than Fallout 76's. The storytelling of Wastelanders is far more interesting because there's actual humans, and even further, the characters are significantly more interesting and I think one of the best parts of this story, but the overall story itself, what is happening, what you're doing, wasn't quite as interesting and I feel like in some ways lacked consequence, although in fairness, Fallout 76's main story was really strong. It was one of my favorite stories from a Fallout game, but again, the way it's told really turned me off of it. Conversely, the characters in this DLC are awesome. In particular on the raider questline. One of the cool parts about the story is the raider and settler questlines are quite distinctive. There of course is the earlier questlines involving the overseer and the wayward, and those are a bit broader and still very interesting. But as you get more focused towards the middle half of the game, you're going to be focused on either having raider story quests or settler story quests, each of which is about raiding vault 79. But with the raiders, there's going to be way more of a focus on characters. The raiders overall are competent and equipped enough to raid a vault because they're raiders, so your task will be more in actually convincing the individual members to help you. And at points, this explores some very dark themes. You'll really get to know some of these characters and some of the problems they're having. Conversely, on the settler side of things, it's more about getting some of the equipment, getting the tools to have all these settlers help you actually break into the vault. And I thought it was pretty cool how there was this difference between the two. It wasn't just getting big drills for two different factions, but rather actual different accomplishments, trying to convince people versus trying to get big drills. And if you only played the raider or settler side, I would highly recommend going back and starting a new character to experience the other side of things. And through the story, in particular with the raider characters, I was pretty surprised how dark Bethesda got some of the time. Through the story overall, you can make a lot of dark post-apocalyptic choices. Using skill checks to convince someone, you should just let me kill you and take all of your items. But specifically with the raiders, it explored themes like depression and suicide, betrayal, and even some in-group, out-group conflicts that all felt very relevant to the time and really draws you in. It made you feel a lot more for the individual characters. Throughout this, there were several hard choices, things that I really had to think about, some moral dilemmas that really felt gray. You could really see either side of the argument and you had to think about what you would do or what your character would do. Although one of the only downsides sides of these were, there really wasn't a huge consequence. Like it was either a fake choice where you could choose to do one thing, but then some other character would swoop in and be like, no, we shouldn't do that. Or if you did make the hard choice or maybe killed someone, they were never going to play a massive role anyway. It's not like there was a huge story shift or a bunch of new options opened up. Large in part, if you did the better deed, you would get more faction reputation. And this was something else that was kind of cool. If you did explore the dialogue system, really talk to certain NPCs after making hard choices, you would oftentimes 
sometimes get faction reputation rewards. But overall, if you want a Fallout experience, this is it. I felt like I was playing Fallout. I got to meet new characters, I had to make some hard choices, and it was a story that, although not my favorite, really drew me in and had me curious or wanting to find out what happens next. With again, those characters really being one of the most compelling things for me. And even after you complete all of that, just beat the main story, there's a lot more to experience. Some of the new events that just got added in, funny enough, doing some of the stuff in the immediate wake of the Wastelanders release, it seems like people are so single player focused that the multiplayer aspects of the game, or at least public multiplayer aspects, are kind of suffering. Nuclear Winter is barren on PC, although that's kind of a standard now. But even some of the events that are typically fairly well fleshed out, and even nuke zones that typically are quite well fleshed out, really had very few people, just a handful. This is again probably because people are doing those new Wastelanders quests and don't want to lose any progress or put that on hold to fast travel to an event real quick. It'll get better with time, but it was interesting. I couldn't finish the event and ended up failing because I literally couldn't get enough people there to help. I had to go out of my way to ask friends or invite randoms to my team so they might get the idea and fast travel over. But the takeaway is there's a lot of new content here. The main story and a lot more. A lot of little things to discover pieces of intrigue that you can find. But of course, one of the other major things around this is even after you complete all of that content, you do have the end game as the second major pillar of something Bethesda had to address or fix with this update. Now with this, Bethesda actually did a pretty good job at addressing things. The vast majority of the new content is locked behind an end game grind. You know, at times, if you're just a casual player playing the main story, this could be somewhat disappointing. You'll really only find three new things, a new power armor helmet, the bow you get very early on, and then you do get the Chinese stealth suit from a settler quest. But if you wanted some of those cool new weapons, you're gonna kinda have to grind for them, whether it be faction reputation or gold bullions. And again, I feel like that's somewhat a double-edged sword. If you're somebody that's not gonna be sticking around, not willing to do the grind that you could really only do on a daily basis, you may just never really get to experience those. They're not tradable items. But as far as the existing player base with Fallout 76 or getting people to stick around over the next few weeks, because this is a multi-week grind, you can't just bang it all out in the next couple of days, this is definitely some pretty interesting incentive to stay around. A lot of cool new weapons, a lot of cool new armors, and then after you actually earn the plans for those items, you still have the grind of getting top tier legendary variants to use against things like the Wendigo Colossus, which is quite rare. I literally haven't seen one yet. This is something I'm only just now getting into after beating the main story, so we'll see how old it gets with this grind. If maybe after unlocking a few of the things, I'm just like, no, I don't want to participate in this anymore. I wish there was an easier way or the grind was simple but I do definitely give it to Bethesda for giving us something some attempt at rectifying some of Fallout 76's late game choices. There probably is a better solution to this, like some additional horde mode, some additional nukable zones with cool creatures. The Wendigo Colossus is kind of that, but just a random encounter in a nuke zone, not quite a new boss level enemy that you can force to spawn by nuking a certain place, but at the very least it's something, and something to work towards that is pretty cool. Now the bugginess for me is actually one of the most surprising parts about this DLC overall, as it is pretty good. Across basically my entire playthrough, bugs were at a minimum. There are quite a few problems around fast travel and vats, in particular vats during the poly quest. It seems to be breaking for numerous people and apparently this is a fairly old problem. But across literally 90% of this quest, it was an almost bug free experience. And in general, I noticed less stutters and better performance than I did on the old build of the game. Except, I did encounter quite a few bugs when it came to the Vault 79 raid. I'm not going to give any spoilers for this, but basically there's a point where you have to talk to somebody on an intercom, and it seems like it just doesn't work sometimes, which requires you to leave the server and in turn start the entire raid over again. You don't lose a ton of progress, it's just really killing some enemies and talking to some people, at least up until that stage, but it still is frustrating. All throughout this I got the respawn glitch, so even though technically I was supposed to respawn in the interior, I would have to teleport back to the vault and then go all the way back through, entering into it again, and that happened every time I died in the vault, which is just annoying. You raid the vault with a group of people, as we saw in the trailer, and at points, at least with the raiders, the people that I brought with me were just not helping me. I was fighting a few of the enemies, and I was like, hey, what happened to like all the others I brought in? They're just not here. Reportedly, there's some issues with them getting stuck on certain objects or not being able to progress. Although, there was no actual loss of progress. They would always teleport to the right spot once I cleared out all of the enemies. So overall, a mostly bug-free experience, and if Bethesda addresses the few bugs that we're fairly deliberating in the next couple of weeks, I would say that's great. The number of bugs we have right now, I would 
view as acceptable. And I hope this is what we start to see going forward with this game. And I think it would be a major contribution to its success in the future. But then what was for me by far the most surprising thing with Wastelanders was the lack of monetization. Now, of course, this is subject to change. Who knows what will happen over the next month or so. In the data mines, it seems like pets may be on the way, so we'll see how that's handled. But even though I expected some pretty big things in the way of utility items, pay to win items, features locked behind Fallout First, we got none of that. Technically, there's a couple of new skins for tents, which they fall out first item, but that's really minor, and basically nothing. But otherwise, no real overt form of monetization that was a big surprise or particularly egregious or really egregious at all. And if anything, I was almost surprised with how little Bethesda was monetizing this on the Atomic Shop. We had those out of game bundles that you had to spend real world money on, but otherwise this part really had very little to talk about. Now I do wonder if this is more so just not releasing it now. You have to imagine they're going to do something with Fallout first, right? There are plenty of things they could add to make the service a bit more interesting or more appealing that aren't egregious, that aren't ridiculously pay to win or shouldn't be behind a paywall. I would love some additional options as far as private server customization, and I'd be willing to pay for that kind of functionality. Not anymore, but just included with the existing subscription. So although right now it is all A-OK -okay in this category, I'm still wary that we may see something else in the future. But overall, after playing Fallout 76's Wastelanders update, and mostly the main story, my biggest takeaway was if you're somebody on the fence about buying this game, one of the biggest reasons I think it might be a good idea to pick it up is almost as an investment. There's a ton of great new content available right now. The new story is great, the world overall sees a vast improvement, the addition of NPCs is felt. You see humans all over the place now. But I'm also really excited to see where they go next with this framework. This story was relatively short, and this is kind of where it gets me back into the Outer Worlds. The Outer Worlds was amazing, but shorter. It didn't have as much depth as people hoped for. I think over the next couple of weeks and months, people may view Wastelanders similarly. After you play it a couple of times, you'll realize, oh, you don't have quite as many choices as you thought. There's not nearly as many random encounters as you previously envisioned when it was all full open. Every random encounter was new. That's not to say Wastelanders isn't a great addition to the game and a huge step forward for it, but what I'm really excited for is the next big DLC. Because with that one, Bethesda has the framework in place. They don't have to spend all the time working on the new questing systems, working on the new dialogue interface. They'll have the ability to use what they already implemented, and what they already implemented is really, really good. So this in general gets me much more excited for all future DLCs for this game. In the short term, it seems like they're shooting for more consistent updates that are basically feature additions, not necessarily story additions. So it's not like the new content is stopping. And overall, after beating the story, playing quite a bit of this over the past couple of days, it's a good one. I think this definitely could be a kickstart to saving Fallout 76, actually making this a high highly respected and just overall good game. I'm not sure it's there yet. I think another couple of months of feature additions and hopefully down the line another big DLC that's story focused like this one would do the trick though. And without a doubt this is a good start and if you're really considering buying Fallout 76 this is probably a good time to jump in. Although again to be clear this is not my full review. I still haven't played all of the new content. I don't know the exact size and scope so some of these ideas or opinions will definitely change. But with all that being said, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative. I would really love to hear from all of you in the comments down below. What are your thoughts? Where are you with the story currently? Do you think this is saving Fallout 76? Do you think things will drastically improve going forward? As always, again, I thank you all for watching again. And with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.